A short time ago, I spoke to Australia's ambassador to Japan, Mari McLean, who joined me from the Japanese capital. Ambassador, welcome to Late Line. You've lived in Tokyo for more than six years. Can you give us your perspective on what this disaster means to, I guess, Japan, but also the Japanese people? Yes, that's a very good question, Ali. The fact is that uh, Japan is now describing this disaster as the worst event since the Second World War. And, of course, we all know about the Japanese in the Second World War, but uh, not everybody remembers that Tokyo was completely destroyed by fire, by firebombs at the, at the latter stage of the uh, Second World War. And, of course, other parts of, J of Japan, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, were destroyed by nuclear bombs. So to describe it in that way just really, uh, I think, means a great deal about how serious this is. The Japanese people really are long-suffering in many ways. They are able to, however, be very resilient, and that's, I think, what we're going to see through this period. They have a wonderful spirit. They're very quiet people, calm people, dignified people, and, but also highly industrious. It's going to be a very big hit on them. But in a sense, I think this earthquake, more than anything else in a while, has perhaps brought the country back together again. It's pretty, pretty united in its spirit to overcome this shocking disaster. It's interesting that you say that it perhaps has brought the country together again because merely on the political front, the current Prime Minister is the fifth Prime Minister in five years. And, and prior to this disaster, many were saying that Naoto Khan and his administration was on the way out. Do you think that this may, I suppose, restore some faith in the leadership in Japan? Well, I think uh, naturally in democracies like uh, our own and in uh, Japan and uh, the United States, for example, when major disasters occur, uh, politics is forgotten often or usually. And that's uh, what's happened here. The opposition leader, uh, the, uh, the head of the Liberal Democratic Party and the other smaller parties uh, leaders have all uh, clearly made it, uh, called a truce to what had been a pretty frenetic and fractious time in politics up, right up until the very day of the earthquake. And uh, they're all rallying behind as you'd expect them to. And uh, Naoto Khan, the Prime Minister, has uh, been very quick to react, to uh, comfort uh, the people. He went up uh, very, the very morning after on an extensive visit uh, uh, by helicopter over the worst areas. He saw them directly himself. He went near as far as that was safe to the um, nuclear reactor that's had one or two issues um, and uh, generally made it very clear that uh, they would be unstinting in what they did to... Restore the, can restore the transport systems, the uh, livelihoods of so many people. You, you talk about the resilience of the Japanese people, but a disaster on this scale, of this magnitude, and given that there is also now the, the nuclear issue to deal with, what does that do to the Japanese psyche? Well, look, they, they, they probably are very knocked about. There's no question about that. Um, Japan, of course... Uh, uh, only 10, 15 years ago was without any question the preeminent economy than in, in this Asia-Pacific area. It's uh, now the third largest economy. China's passed it by in gross uh, GDP terms. Um, and uh, the Japanese economy itself has been relatively sluggish over some time. But it's very interesting. This country really does seem to get it together when there's a crisis. The... Uh, people uh, who are running the big companies and the businesses are all uh, supporting uh, whatever relief effort there could be. There's been uh, a complete understanding, albeit obviously frustrations amongst the city dwellers about the need for power blackouts in order to conserve energy because of the uh, effect of the earthquake on their power supplies. Um, and uh, people are stoically standing in queues that may last an hour and a half to get to a cashier at a supermarket. So these are the sorts, this is the sort of spirit that uh, is very impressive. I believe that uh, Japan will come through this pretty well. They, their, their corporations are, are really extremely good. Uh, that's the major trading corporations, the manufacturers, the industrialists such as the Toyotas of this world and the Nippon Steels. They will obviously 
have some uh, something of a setback in the temporary, uh, maybe for this, the next six months. But I'm sure that uh, they're going to get back on their feet. I just get feeling, I really feel a strong, strong sense of that spirit in, in Japan right now. Can you give us an update on Australians in the area? I know that you've got a, a consular response team that's now in Sendai. I understand that they're visiting hospitals, they're even visiting morgues. They are doing an extensive uh, survey of every possible facility where Australians might be found. They have, uh, even last night when they hit the ground there at 6 o'clock, they are out until late visiting the various uh, pre prefectural government authorities uh, to get full briefings where they did find out some very useful information about some of the Australians uh, who are in the Miyagi area. Uh, and uh, moreover, um, they have uh, visited uh, a morgue next door, as it were. Fortunately, they found no Australian uh, remains there. Um, and uh, they've been through hospitals uh, and uh, other areas beyond, beyond Sendai, much closer to the very uh, severely hit areas. Uh, they, they, they have described the scenes of absolute devastation in these areas, but I have to say that uh, we've been very pleased that they've uh, been able to come to identify or at least to uh, know that a number of uh, young Australians who there are safe. We're obviously very concerned about some people um, uh, because we haven't yet been able to have contact with them. But uh, we're, this sort of uh, presence on the ground is actually intended to be something of a magnet. People, we hope, will hear that the Australians are in town and uh, their friends or others will say, oh, yes, so-and-so was there or whatever, and they're still there. They just can't communicate perhaps by internet or email because uh, the lines are down or mobile telephones don't work. So that's the reason we're up there as much as anything else, uh, and we really hope that anybody back in Australia who happens to hear this uh, and knows that somebody is safe up there but perhaps uh, they haven't been able to communicate uh, to the embassy, please do so. And from a, a diplomatic perspective, are, are you comfortable with all the information that you're being given about the latest on this nuclear threat, the situation with the nuclear reactors? Well, we are monitoring this extremely closely. Uh, we have foremost in our minds the welfare of Australian citizens in Japan and uh, we would not want to leave any stone unturned in ensuring we've got the most accurate information. The Japanese are uh, providing information now quite quickly about this, including about the second explosion that took place today. That was very quick. Moreover, we have the Australian authorities uh, who are specifically tasked with this issue of uh, radiation protection, uh, working hard with the International uh, Atomic Energy Agency to address this issue, uh, peeling back the layers to make sure that everything is indeed accurate. Um, at this stage, uh, we, are, uh, we are of the view that uh, while it's obviously a serious matter of concern what's happened, uh, that the, the situation is stable, there is no significant emission of radioactivity and that uh, the, um, the situation is, as it were, under control for the time being. Murray McLean, many thanks for taking the time to talk to Late Line tonight. Thanks very much, Ellie.